Okay, it's time to get ready for reassembly. I started out by setting the intake manifold on the bench and putting the blower case onto the intake. Be aware that a 671 blower does have a front and a back when installed on a hot rod. As you can see in this first picture, when you put the blower on backwards, the bolt holes don't line up. So make sure that you start out with your blower in the right orientation so you don't start assembling things backwards. Notice now that once I spun the blower around, the bolt holes on the driver's side do line up properly. To keep from flipping the blower case by accident while I was handling it during assembly, I ended up taking my letter punches and actually stamping the word front in the front of the blower case. Before doing my first trial assembly to check end clearance, I took a flat file and very carefully deburred the ends of both of the rotors to make sure I'd get accurate measurements. Next I took my brand new Diamond P Industries end plate, set it on the bench, and then set the bare blower case on top of that. After that I carefully set the rotors in the case so I could measure overall end clearance. It's important to keep in mind that there is a left hand and a right hand rotor on a 671. During this first trial assembly I intentionally put the rotors in backwards to be able to show how you don't want to put the rotors in the case. When the rotors are installed correctly the helix will start in the center at the front of the case and then spiral away towards the outside edge of the case at the back. I took a depth mic and I measured from the edge of the case to the faces of the rotors and depending on where I measured I got dimensions of between 32 thousandths and 35 thousandths. I would find out later once I had the case clamped to the table of the mill the reason I was getting such strange measurements is because the ends of the case were not particularly flat. I finished off by writing all my dimensions down on the end of each rotor so that if I got interrupted on the project I wouldn't forget where I left off. Next I took the bearings and the plate over to the arbor press and using a bushing driver pressed the bearings into the plate being really careful to keep the bearings nice and straight as they went all the way to the bottom of the bore. The next step was tightening the rotors against the inner races of the bearings. Last time I did this about 25 years ago, I just took a chunk of pipe and cut it off and used that for my spacer and then put a couple of washers behind the gear retainer bolts so that I could pull the rotors up really tight against the inner race of the bearing so that it would duplicate the conditions when the blower was finished assembled. After tightening the rotors against the bearings, I flipped the whole thing over so I could use feeler gauges to check the clearance between the end of the rotor and the front bearing plate. I like using three feeler gauges, one underneath each lobe, because the rotors can rock around on the bearings just a little bit, and if you only measure in one spot, you might not get an accurate measurement. However, when you use three feeler gauges, you get a pretty accurate measurement of the end clearance. The Detroit Diesel Manual shows that the front end clearance should be no tighter than seven thousandths of an inch. I measured an actual of eight thousandths of an inch, and it also means that I'll never have to worry about the end of the rotor gong against the bearing plate. After my first trial assembly of the blower, I took a depth mic and checked 
the distance of the rotors from the very end of the case. On the right side, I came out with 24 thousandths down into the case. And on the left side, when I checked it in several spots, always double checked in a couple of different spots, I came out with 23 thousandths down the case. The Detroit Diesel Manual shows that the end clearance at the back should be about 14 thousandths. That means that my case is too long. So I'll take the case over to the bridge port later and I'll fly cut the case in order to shorten it up a little bit. And I'll take about five or six thousandths off each side of the case.